The golden ratio can be found almost everywhere, and it has been said that it represents a universal law in which is contained the ground principle of all formative striving for beauty and completeness in the realms of both nature and art, and which permeates as a paramount spiritual ideal all structures, forms and proportions, whether cosmic or individual, organic or inorganic, which finds its fullest realization in human form. But if you go to Google and tap in a reason for the golden ratio, you will find very little information giving a logical reason why the golden ratio is everywhere. The rest of this video is going to explain a reason based on physics with mathematics representing the geometry of a dynamic process. The mathematics of the golden ratio is divided into two parts, A and B. This can represent the absorption and emission of light, photon energy, that forms a process of continuous energy exchange. This can be put into geometrical form by taking the two ends of the line and joining them together to form a circle. If we then place a point in the center of the circle and draw lines out across the radius to the A and B on the surface of the sphere, the angle formed at the center is the golden angle, 137.5 degrees. Mathematically, we have to square section A to form the golden rectangle out of section B. If we continuously repeat this process with smaller and smaller rectangles, we form the Fibonacci spiral. And this is exactly what we have within this process. We have a square in the form of the charge of the electron being squared with the spontaneous absorption and emission of light, photon energy, forming a repetition of the process. In this theory, the fine structure constant, as part of a geometrical process, forms the golden angle, and with it the Fibonacci spiral, that we see almost everywhere in nature. All the information I can find says that each new vector is formed by adding the two previous vectors together. This forms the Fibonacci sequence. In this theory, we have the Fibonacci numbers in nature, not because of economy of growth or space, but because time and space is being formed by the geometry and therefore the mathematics of this dynamic process. As can be seen on the diagram, we already have zero, representing the moment of now, time equals zero, with positive one and minus one, representing the positive and negative of electromagnetic waves. Therefore, we even have the start of the Fibonacci sequence in the diagram. This is linked to Euler's identity, giving this beautiful equation a place in the structure of space and time. This theory explains a greater reality of one creative principle behind the laws of physics, forming something like a sounding board of a musical instrument that resonates with the vibrations of one's own thoughts, efforts and actions. In this theory, mass is a byproduct of time dilation. When time slows down, it takes more effort to move an object from A to B, and this is seen as an increase in mass. Also, Einstein's equivalence principle between gravity and acceleration falls out of this theory. Because energy and momentum have to increase for an object to accelerate, time dilation will increase relative to the acceleration. Therefore, we have the equivalence principle between gravity and acceleration. This will be felt as inertia in the direction of the acceleration. Therefore, we have Isaac Newton's first law of motion. Unless acted upon by a net 
unbalanced force, an object will maintain a constant velocity. This theory takes the dynamic interactive process of the general theory of relativity and extends it to our everyday life, explaining a universe that is continuously coming into existence relative to the energy and momentum of our own actions. Every individual is a part of this interactive process that forms the uncertainty and probability that is needed for the great game of life. But above all, this theory gives us an objective understanding of time as a process of continuous creation. Even a rose blooming will create its own arrow of time within its own reference frame. This fits in with the reality of our everyday life with a past and potential future that we can interact with from the centre of our own reference frame, turning the possible into the actual. This can be in the form of art and poetry. Therefore, even a dancer on the dance floor will interact with this process, forming their own future space-time relative to their energy and momentum of their own actions. For in this theory, creation is truly in the hand and eye of the beholder, with an objective reality in the form of a dynamic interactive process that forms an infinity of possibilities. I have tried to make this theory as simple as possible in the belief that everyone should be able to understand it. In my other videos I explain this theory in much greater detail. As an artist I am outside the scientific community, so any help you can give in promoting this theory will be gratefully welcome. Thanks for watching. Please share and subscribe. It will help the promotion of this theory.